All phenomena, everything we experience, the Buddha said, is rooted in desire, are rooted in desire. And we desire happiness. So the question is, why don't we get the happiness that we desire? It's because our desires are ignorant. We're ignorant of the way things work. We want to put in only a little effort or no effort at all and get a happiness at last. And we've learned, of course, at least to some extent, that that doesn't always work. And there's a good part of the mind that really doesn't like that. It's when we realize that we have to change our understanding of what works and what doesn't work. We have to train our desires. That's when wisdom begins. Realize that we can't get everything we want the way we want it. We have to learn to choose what we want, focus on that. As the Buddha says, if you see that a greater happiness comes from letting go of a lesser happiness, you're willing to let go of the lesser happiness for the sake of the greater. There was an English scholar who translated that verse one time, and in a footnote he said, this couldn't possibly be what the verse means. It's just too simple, too obvious. Well, it may be obvious, but it's certainly not the way people live. We want to win at chess and keep all our pieces. We want our major desires and we want our little desires. We don't want to have to give anything up that we want. It's when we realize that we do have to give certain things up and we have to prioritize. That's when we begin to bring some knowledge to our desires. The Buddha said it's a several-step process. First is realizing that you need some training from other people who are more experienced in what brings to happiness than you are. And you have to look for the right people. You find someone that seems reliable, and you have to watch that person for a good while. You ask yourself, is there anything in this person that would make this person want to claim things that he or she didn't know, claim knowledge of things that he or she didn't know? Or would this person ever get anyone else to do something that was not in that other person's best interest? It takes a while to observe a person to be able to judge this. But if you're truly serious about trying to find true happiness, you have to be responsible about who you choose to hang out with, who you choose to listen to who you choose as your, as your friends. We see mo so many cases of people finding out that their teachers are unreliable. But when you ask them, it turns out that there were warning signs that they chose to ignore. So there's a certain responsibility that's placed on the student to try to find a good teacher. And you spend time with the teacher. You have a sense that the teacher is trustworthy, and you listen to what the teacher has to say. And you think it over. And when it makes sense, that's what in the Buddha says you begin to have a desire to do the practice. Because the example of the teacher is, shows you that it is possible to find true happiness, a higher happiness than what you already have, which gives you some impetus to want to make some changes in your behavior. And then you listen to the teachings, and they have to make sense. And a really good teaching opens up your perspective on what true happiness is, so that you're willing to let go of lesser things. This is why the Buddha defined ignorance as ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. Not ignorance of the three characteristics, ignorance of the Four Noble Truths, because they talk about desire. There's the desire that causes suffering, and then there's the desire in the Eightfold Path, under the fact of right effort, that leads to the end of suffering. And the skillful desire is the one that wants to develop all skillful qualities in the mind, abandon all unskillful qualities. That's the kind of desire you want to encourage. But the Four Noble Truths also set out a possibility that it is possible to find an ultimate happiness that's unchanging true. 
total freedom. That is a human possibility. And the Four Noble Truths set that out. They don't say, well, you have to accept the fact that there's going to be change in life, so just accept the change. Or that things are impermanent, stressful, you learn, accept the impermanence and stress. Things are not self, accept that they're not self. And just content yourself with that. That's not what they say. They say that ultimate happiness is possible, and it be, can be gained through human effort. And the proper way to take that is to see it as a challenge. Here's a possibility that you can do. Do you want to accept that challenge? If so, look at the other things you've been doing in life that would get in the way. Can you learn how to say no? As the Buddha said, a measure of your wisdom is with things that you like to do but you know are going to lead to suffering or harm, that you can say no. Things you may not like to do, but you know are going to lead to long-term welfare and happiness. Teach yourself how to want to do those things. So you're training your desires. And you want to train them in a direction of a happiness that's really reliable, because it is possible. It can be done. There are people who found it. They're good people, reliable people. You can't see their happiness. As John Mahabhu said, if you could take nirvana out and show it to everybody, that's the only thing anybody would ever want. Everything else in the world would pale by comparison. But you can't see it. You can't see someone else's experience of that. But you look at the people who seem to have found that, and they seem to be good people. And that's the beginning of conviction. It's not knowledge, but it's conviction, and it's the conviction that gives force to your desire to want to practice more. Because otherwise, you, if you see nobody in the world is really awakened, or every, the best anybody can do is just accept things as they are and not try to make any changes, then what kind of effort would you want to put out? It would be very discouraging. There would be no need to make any effort at all, no desire to make any effort at all, and you'd be stuck where you are in an area that's in a situation that's really not acceptable. When the Buddha talks about accepting things, it's not accepting just where you are and staying there. It's accepting that you have responsibility for shaping your life, and accepting that things could be better if you trained yourself. And where you're going to look for the cause of your suffering, you have to look inside. That's another message from the Four Noble Truths. And again, it's a message which we may not like to hear. We'd like to blame our suffering on other people, but think about it. If your suffering comes from other people, what are you going to do? You're going to change them? And how many people in the world would you have to change? There'd be no end to it. But as the Buddha points out, it comes from our ignorant craving. That's where the suffering comes from. And that's something we can do something about. Ignorance may be long-lasting. As the Buddha said, you can't trace back in time to find a point where ignorance began. But it doesn't have any right to lay claim to you. And John Sowett's images of taking a light into the darkness, into a place that's been dark for who knows how long. In the darkness, can't say, we've been here ever since time began, and this light has no right to chase us away. As soon as there's light, there's light, the darkness has to go. As soon as there's knowledge, your ignorance goes. So regardless of how ignorant you've been in the past, it's something you can change. So the Four Noble Truths set a high standard, but they also promise a lot. There's a path we can follow, and it leads to true happiness, ultimate, unchanging, unlimited. And when you think about that, then what's required in the path doesn't seem so onerous, doesn't seem so scary, doesn't seem so large. The happiness we want is much larger than that. We have to keep that in mind at all times. 
So when you find yourself getting lazy, ask yourself, is this the best you can do? Is this how you show your desire for true happiness? By making excuses for your laziness? You try to have that internal chatter that the Buddha talked about when he talked about reasons for laziness and reasons for being diligent. And the outside situations are always the same. You may say, I've been traveling a lot, or I've been sick, or I didn't get much to eat this morning. And make that an excuse for not practicing. But you can also say, I've been traveling a lot, I didn't have a chance while I was traveling to practice, but now I have the chance. I've been sick. I didn't have the chance when I was sick, but now I have the chance to practice. But I didn't, don't eat much, the body's light. It's not weighed down by all that food. Good time to practice. It's how you talk to yourself that's going to make all the difference. That's where you see wisdom in action. So try to get some wise voices in your internal conversation. Inform them with affordable truths. And teach them to train your desires so that they really do lead to the happiness they want. Or as the Buddha says, it's better happiness than that your desires can imagine. But at the very least, the desires that try to imagine that kind of happiness, encourage those. And then make sure those desires actually do take control of your actions. So that in accepting what really does lead to happiness, you can do what's needed to find it. <laughs>